Good day students, welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over part one, problems one to five of the ACT math test. Problem one reads, a car averages 27 miles per gallon. If gas costs $4.04 per gallon, which of the following is closest to how much the gas would cost for this car to travel 2,727 typical miles? Now, one thing you want to note um, when converting units um, is that you want to ensure that it's set up in such a way that um, identical units cancel out, okay? Now, these are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. First of all, we're going to find the unit cost by converting units. We have a lot of units here. We have miles per gallon, we have per gallon, and then we have miles here, so we're going to find the unit cost. Um, and then after that, we're going to find the total cost using this formula down here, um, the total cost formula, which is the unit price times quantity. Okay, so let's start off by finding the unit price. So part one, let's find the unit price. Now, what is unit price? Unit price is basically the dollar per mile cost. How much does it cost per mile? So unit, when I talk about unit price, I'm talking about dollar per mile. Now, why do we want to find the unit price? Because if we know how much, how many dollars it costs for a mile, we can simply multiply it by the total number of miles, which is the quantity to find the total cost, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and find that out first. So unit price equals, now we know that um, it's $4 per gallon, okay? So that's $4.04 per gallon, so for every, um, four dollars and four cents for every one gallon okay so for one gallon now what I want is how many dollars per mile so I'm going to be multiplying this by making use of the fuel consumption number of this car this car averages 27 miles per gallon so for every gallon you cover 27 miles okay so now I can here I can either put 27 let me change the color here I can either put 27 miles for one gallon or I can put one gallon for 27 miles so the question is which of these can help me convert this measure to dollars per mile the one that enables me to cancel out gallon so if gallon is a denominator unit on this um, ratio right here, then gallon must be a numerator unit on the ratio I select to use to convert um, this to dollars per mile, okay? So we're going to be using this second option right here. So we have, take a look at this setup, we have um, one gallon. For every one gallon, how many miles does the car cover? The car covers 27 miles. So why are we using this ratio again as opposed to the set, the first one? It's because, examine this, the gallons cancel out and you're left with dollars per mile. That is the unit price that we're looking for. Okay, so the unit price is 4.04 divided by 27 dollars per mile. Okay, dollars per mile. So this is the unit price. If you want to put this in a calculator and find out the numerical value of this expression, that's fine, it's not necessary. Um, we, we are just going to leave it like this. It doesn't look pretty, but it's fine. Okay, so now we're done with the first part, which is finding the unit cost. Now we're going to find the total cost by uh, making use of this formula right here, okay? So number two, we want to find the total cost. Um, total cost. So that is, let's write down the formula. Total cost is equal to unit price 
times quantity, okay? All right, so let's see what we have. We know that our unit price is um, 4.04 .04 over $27 per mile. For each mile, this is how much it's going to cost you. Now, what is our um, quantity? How many miles are we covering? So quantity, quantity is 2,727 miles. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the total cost. So our total cost is going to be unit price 4.04 .04 over 27. And let's put the units there so you, you see how everything works out nicely. So 404 over $27 per mile. This is a unit price times the quantity 2,727 miles. All right. Now, examine the units. What do you see happening? You notice that this mile and this mile cancels out. And then you're left with dollars, which is perfect because what we're looking for is costs, all right? So if you plug this into your calculator and you multiply it out, you end up with $408.04, uh, all right? So our answer is option letter D. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. It says, when X equals three and Y equals five, by how much does the value of 3x squared minus 2y exceed the value of 2x squared minus 3y? All right, so something to note um, is that whenever you're evaluating expressions or even functions at a particular value, you always want to use parentheses for safety reasons. That prevents you from making errors associated with signs or um, the application of the order of operations. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, these are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. First of all, we're going to substitute the values of x and y into the two expressions. And then we're going to evaluate the expressions using the order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, PEMDAS. After that, we're going to find a difference between the two terms. See by how much this first term is greater or exceeds the value of the second term, okay? So step number one, let's um, go ahead and evaluate these two expressions at the respective x and y values. So firstly, let's state what x and y are. x is 3 and y is 5. So the first expression, 3x squared minus 2y, equals is going to be equal to what? Um, we're going to have three parentheses instead of x squared. We're going to plug in the value of x, which is 3. Quantity square minus 2 times y. y is 5. There, OK? Now we have this resulting expression. We're going to use the order of operations to simplify it. All right, so you, you, about, you use um, exponents first before you multiply, like powers or exponents. So evaluate this exponent. We're going to have um, 3 times 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 5. We can multiply that, which is 10. We have 3 times 9, 27, minus 10, which is 17. Okay, let's evaluate the second expression, 2x squared minus 3y. Um, at x and y, values of 3 and f 5, so let's fix that. <laughs> we have 2 times 3 square minus 3 times 5. And then we use um, order of operations here again, okay? So we have Two 3 times 3 is 9, so 2 times 9 minus 3 times 5, which is 15. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 15. Final answer is 3. All right, so by how much does the first 
our value exceed the second, we just simply find the difference. That's step two. So for step two, we're going to evaluate this 3x squared minus 2y minus 2x squared minus 3y. Okay? So the first expression evaluated at 3, 5 is 17. The second one is 3. 17 minus 3 is 14. Okay? So 3x squared minus 2y exceeds 2x squared minus 3y by 14 units. And we can clearly see that our answer is option letter G. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. It says, what is the value of x when 2x plus 3 is equal to 3x minus 4? Now, one thing you want to note when solving algebraic equations with variables on both sides, as you can see here, you can have no solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions, okay? If you end up with a false statement like 2 equals 5, that's no solution. If you have x equals a numerical value, that's one solution. Or if you end up with a statement that's always true, like 10 equals 10, then you have infinitely many solutions, okay? So just keep that in mind. These are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. First of all, we'll call, uh, move all the uh, variables to one side and the numbers to the other side, and then we get x isolated, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So we have 2x plus 3 is equal to 3x minus 4. Now, since the x on the right has a greater coefficient than this one right here, I'm going to move this to the right. So we'll subtract 2x from both sides, and this positive 4 needs to go to the left side, so we'll add 4 to both sides, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and combine these two equations. We're going to have um, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 equals x, x equals 7. Our answer is option letter E. All right, let's take a look at number four. It says, what is the greatest common factor of 42, 126, and 210? Now, one thing you want to note about GCF um, is that it's basically defined as the largest number that divides a set of numbers, two or more numbers. What does divides mean? It goes into it without any remainder. Okay, so these are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. First of all, we're going to decompose the three numbers we're dealing with here, 42, 126, and 210, into their prime factors, all right? Then we're going to set up a GCF grid and use it to extract all the factors that are in common. We'll then multiply those factors, and that will be our GCF, okay? All right, so step number one, we're going to carry out our decomposition. Remember, this is a prime factor decomposition. Only um, prime factors are allowable in this decomposition, okay? All right, so let's start with 42. What is the um, first prime number that goes into 42, the smallest one? 2. 2 goes into 42, 21 times, and then 3 goes into 21, 7 times. All right, so these are the prime factors of 42. So 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. This is called the prime factor decomposition of 1 of 42. That's the factor tree method. All right, 126 is even, so we know 2 goes into it for sure. 2 goes into 126, 63 times. Now, 63, if you add the two digits, you get 9. Since 3 goes into the 9, that guarantees that 3 goes into 63. So, 3 goes into 63, 21 times. 21, we know that 3 goes into there. 7 times also. So, th the prime factor decomposition of 126 is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. Okay, now let's look at the last number, 210. Let's decompose this. It's even, so we can factor out 2. 2 goes into 210 105 times. Um, just 3 go here. 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 
6, does 3 go into 6? It does, so 3 goes into 105. 3 goes into 105, 3 goes into 10, 3 times, remainder 1, carried over here. 15, 3 goes into 15, 5 times. Okay, now this one is easy, we know what 35 is. 35 is 5 times 7, and those two are prime numbers, so we extract the smaller first, 5, and we're left with 7. So the prime factor of the composition of 210 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. All right, so we're done with the first step, which is uh, finding the prime factor of the composition. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to create our GCF grid, which helps us organize the factors in such a way that we can um, extract common factors. Okay, so we have 42, 126, and 210. Okay, so let's go ahead and create it. So this is how you create your um, GCF grid. All right, so let's separate them into their respective rows. Okay, and now um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, just putting, placing the common factors in this uh, grid in such a way that they must be identical to any factor that's in that column. Any pre-existing factor in that column, you have to match it in order for you to place the factor in that in that column. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's start with. So the first one to go is the smallest number. We just start with 42. It doesn't really matter what you start with, but whatever you start with, you have to, whatever um, the subsequent um, elements have to respect whatever um, the first one occupies. Okay. So we start with 42. This is two, three, and seven. What is this? This means that. This is a two column, this is a three column, this is a seven column. Only twos can be placed in this column. Only threes here and only sevens here. If you have a factor that does not match any of these two, that number must be placed in its new column, okay? So that's that's how um, the GCF grid works. All right, so let's take a look at 126. 126 is two times three times three times seven. So can we put a 2 here? Absolutely, since it matches. Can we put a 3 here? Yes. Uh, we have another 3. We don't have any space for it, so we have to create a new column for our 3. And then we have a 7, so we place a 7 here. Okay, only identical numbers can be in, in a, the same column. All right, and then 210 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, so we have 2 times 3. Now, this is a 7 column, we can put the 5 here. This is a 3 column, we can put a 5 here. So we have to create a new column for our 5. Okay, so we have 2, 3, 5 accounted for, just a 7 remaining, so we have a 7. Now, what is a GCF? The GCF are uh, columns that are fully populated, columns that have a number from each of these numbers. Can you see what the common factors are? Three is, I mean, two is definitely a common factor because you have two as a factor of all three. Another three is, is a common factor because three is a factor of all three. And then seven. You see, so those are, that's the GCF right there. The rules where you have numbers for every single number, okay? So we extracted two times three times seven. That is a GCF, okay? So the greatest common factor, you just simply multiply these common factors, 2 times 3 times 7, which is 42. Our answer is option number letter K. All right, let's take a look at problem 5. It reads, um, sales for a business were $3 million dollars uh, more than this, the second year than the first. And sales for the third year were double the sales for the second year. If sales for the third year were $38 million, what were sales in millions of dollars for the first year? One thing you want to note when working on problems where measures are defined in terms of unknown measures uh, you always want to assign a variable to the base or foundational measure, 
okay? And then use that to define the other measures that you, um, that you have. So in this case, we have um, the second year being $3 million more than the first. What is the first year? We don't even know it, right? And then the third year has doubled the second. So the base, um measure is unknown so in order to be able to create an algebraic equation we have to assign a variable to the base measure and then the other measures that are dependent on it can be created using that foundational definition all right so in this problem these are the steps we're going to use we're going to assign a variable to the base quantity in this case it's the first year since every other year is dependent on it directly or indirectly we're then going to set up an equation that relates the known and unknown quantities, basically translating these expressions into uh, into numerical um, into algebraic form. And then lastly, we're going to solve our resulting equation for the variable and use it to determine the desired quantity. All right. So first, one, uh, step one, we're going to uh, declare our variable. So since the base one, everything is dependent on the first year, we're going to say let, let's call it X. Okay, so let X be the sales for the first year. Of course, there's a millions, but that doesn't really matter here for the first year. All right. So what does that mean? Well, now we can start to build our algebraic expressions because we have a foundation if we don't have a foundation then um we don't have anything to build off of okay all right so now we're going to deal with the setup <coughs> now to set it up we're going to start from the base the foundation which is the first year the first year um the sales was what it was x millions right how about the second year the second year, notice in the problem, is $3 million more. I mean, sales for the sales were $3 million more the second year than the first. So what operation is $3 million more? In millions of dollars, what operation is three more? Three more is addition. Okay, so let's write it down first. So it's three million more than more than the first okay so since the first is x three more than the first is going to be three plus x all right and lastly the third year um the third year what are we told about the third year if you go back to the problem it says sales for the third year were double the sales for the second year. Okay, so double the second year. Double the second year. So what operation is a double? So double means you multiply by two. So we're going to double the second year, which is three more than the first, which is three plus x. So we'll double three plus x. And that equals, if you distribute, that six plus two x. Okay, all right. But we also know another fact concerning the third year. We all have another equation for the third year. We are told that um, sales for the third year were 38 million. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, we can also write down the uh, equation third year sales is also equal to 38. Okay, so now we can set up an equation using our two third year equations. Our equation is going to be 6 plus 2x equals 38. Now, let's go ahead and solve uh, this resulting algebraic equation for x. To accomplish that, we'll subtract 6 from both sides. That yields 2x equals uh, 32. Then divide both sides by 2. To undo this 2 that has been multiplied by the x. And then you have x is equal to 16. 16 million. That's the um, sales for the first year. Okay, so the sales for the first year. Let's just write down um, the meaning within the context of the problem. The sales for the first year. 
uh, was 16 million. All right. So we can clearly see that our answer is option letter A. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We appreciate it. We we'll like your feedback. If you found this presentation helpful, um, do give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you like, you can also subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this re review series. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com on the test prep. If you have any questions or like support, feel free to include um, your questions in the comment section below and we'll be glad to um, address it as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.